I am here Shushmita Sarkar from the Department of Electrical Engineering at KIT's College of Engineering Autonomous Kolhapur. Today I am here for the course Signals and System. So in this course of Signal and Systems, the learner will be able to learn various important aspects of the signal and system like the concepts of signal and systems. Next the concept of linear time invariant system. After this, we will be able to derive the Fourier series for a given periodic signal and determine the Fourier transform of a signal and realize a system from its frequency response. Also, this course will focus on learning the Laplace transform of a signal and realize a system from its transfer function and determine the Z transform of a signal and realize a system from its system function. We will begin with the first unit which is introduction to signals and system. In this, I am here today with the lesson number 1 as basic definitions, classification of signals. The objective of this lesson is to understand the various definitions as well as learn the classification of signals. Moving ahead, we will see what is the basic definition of a signal, example of a continuous time signal and classification of signals. So, if you want to define a signal, how do we define it? We define it as a physical quantity, any physical quantity. It may be like sound, temperature, intensity, pressure, whichever is varying with overall period of time or it may be varying with space or it can also be defined as like a dependent or an independent variable. Often it is also called like a single value function for a signal which is carrying the information through the amplitude, frequency and phase also. Here we have got an example of a continuous time signal. This is the most common example which we could cite in order to understand a signal. If you observe this signal, you will see the signal x of t represented graphically over the period of time t. On the left hand side, if you see, we have the equation for x of t where it is defined for a sine function. The sine function is defined by the amplitude of sine multiplied by the radian function that means the frequency plus the phase angle where angular frequency which is in radians is given by omega and it is expressed as a sin 2 pi f t plus 5 where a stands for the peak amplitude f is the frequency the frequency as we know it is inversely proportional to the time period. If we move ahead in understanding such kind of continuous time signal, you can see two signals in the first diagram where they have the same phase and frequency but a different amplitude. In the second example, if we see we can visualize two signals which have same amplitude and phase but the frequency of the second waveform is increased comparison to the first one where the frequency can be seen as a difference of representation over the graph. Again, we have 
same amplitude and frequency signal but the phase is different. This is differing by 90 degrees whereas the other is differing by 180 degrees. Now if we go ahead with the classification of signals on the basis of dimension where the signals can be classified on four bases. First is one dimensional signal. The best example to cite would be speech, music and computer data. Next we have two dimensional signals which are like pictures or images. Then three dimensional signals like video data. Also we have four dimensional signals like volume of data which is being represented over the period of time. If now we come to the broader classification of signals, they could be enlisted something like below. We will go with the first one analog and digital signal. These are the primary signals which we have been learning and we would like to cite them as the very first example. Analog signal is a continuous function of time and it is used to carry the information which is known so called analog information in the form of a signal. Like we have observed a continuous signal right now in the previous example. In contrast to we have digital signals which is a discrete function of time and it is not continuous in nature. A digital signal is represented here where you can see the levels switching from the upper half of 0 to say an amplitude of 1 and the lower half is switching to a level from 0 to minus 1. Digital signals are used in number of advanced processors and systems. Now coming again to the continuous and discrete time signals. As we have already told a continuous signal is going to be represented or it is defined for all instants of time. Whereas a discrete is defined only at discrete instants or intervals of time. If you closely observe this graph, the graph what does it tell? You can see the signal is being represented over a continuous time period unlike your discrete where in discrete the signals are represented at certain instants of time. That means these signals are not present continuously over the period of time. Then comes deterministic and non-deterministic signals. If a signal has no certainty with respect to its value at any instant of time, then those are called as non-deterministic. But for deterministic signal, they need to be certain with the period of time. Non-deterministic signal, if we talk about in particular, the non-deterministic signals are random in nature. Hence, often they are also called as random signals. Random signals can never be defined by any mathematical formula as due to their probabilistic nature. Like the probability of 6 coming over a dice can never be told in finite equation. It is only a probability that can describe that 
how many times the six will appear when a dice is thrown. So, if you see a deterministic signal has a finite representation over the time period which is shown here whereas a non-deterministic signal due to its random nature it is represented randomly. Then comes the classification of even and odd signals. When is a signal said to be even? It is said to be even only if it satisfies the condition for x of t is equal to x of minus of t. In the example which is shown before you, you can see some functions with representation of t square and t raised to 4 cos of t. Say suppose we define x of t is equal to t square. So, x of minus of t becomes as minus of t whole thing square. So, it comes as t square which is equal to x of t. So, the t square function causes x minus of t to give an even value thus this is an even function. On the other hand for an odd signal it will satisfy the condition x of t which is equal to minus of minus of x minus of t. So, this is the basic difference between these two. Then comes periodic and aperiodic signals. When do we call a signal to be periodic? It is only called as periodic if it satisfies two conditions where x of t is the signal which is defined for the entire value of x of t plus of t. The small t represents the function x of t which will be represented over the fundamental time period capital of t. Again the fundamental time period if you see will define the frequency as well. If you see over the graph, you can see from one rising edge of the graph of the signal for a continuous signal which is represented here for a periodic continuous signal, you can see the signal which is rising from this particular point has a total time period t0 unless and until the next rising edge of the signal. So, this is the very first period of the signal. Then comes energy and power signal. If a signal has finite amount of energy, then it is called as energy signal, which is represented as the boundaries of within minus of infinity to plus infinity for x square of t multiplied by dt. Also, a signal is said to be power signal when it has finite power only. That means, the power is found over the energy. Power is relative over certain instant of time when the energy is present for the signal. Thus, the power P is defined as limit of T 
extending up to infinity where we define the function x square of t dt integrated over the period of 1 minus of t and here again we see t. So, it is integrated over this period. It is also known well to us that power of a energy signal is 0 unless and until we try to find out the power for relative instant of time. And energy which is present for a power signal is infinity because we try to calculate the power which is present over the instantaneous point of time which is the going to give us the huge value. Then comes real and imaginary signal. A signal when is it called real? When it will satisfy the condition x t is x star of t. If you see an example here shown for a real signal. So, if the signal does not yield any imaginary parts, then it is called to be a real signal. In the other case, otherwise for a odd signal, it is going to represent or it is going to yield, give us a negative or imaginary part. This is called so called minus of 3j if you see here in the given example x of t is equal to 3j then x star of t 3j will give us minus of 3j which is minus of xt. So, this is so called as a odd signal. Thus, it is very much important to note that for a real signal imaginary part should be 0. Similarly, for an imaginary signal, the real part should be 0. Now, we have come to the reflection spot. We have learned about the basic definition of a signal as well as its classification. You could just now pause the video and think on the probable differences between the different types of signals. So, on reflection you must have so thought and sorted out some such kind of examples as what is a signal for you. It may be a voice signal, video signal signal on the telephone wires or even an image signal. Also, different types of signals on the basis of dimensions as we have seen. The best example if you could think about sitting in a room could be the temperature of a room which is being sensed over a period of time is a continuous form of a signal. And in contrast to it, if we go to consider an example of digital or discrete signals, if we try to find out the discrete signals at any instant at of time, so we can think about the yearly population of a country which is counted by the census where every home is being counted on the number of discrete people. That means how many number of people are present in that particular home. So, we have another example for like monthly sales of a company which talks about the discrete products and their sales at different levels incurred by the company. Now, we have come to the need of studying signals. As the course is interpreted towards understanding the different types of signals and to observe the different kinds of signals which are present around us. Also, we should know the nature of the signals before we learn the different kinds of system which is of utmost importance. This brings me to the end of lesson 1. 
in lesson 2 we will be learning about the definition of the system and the classification of the systems thank you